Choosing the right fly line is absolutely critical to your fly fishing success. On two counts, you need to make an effective fly cast, and secondly, you need to present the fly in such a way to convince the fish to bite it. This is particularly a daunting task if you're new to fly fishing or you've just dabbled in it. The reason being, you literally have hundreds of choices when it comes to choosing a fly line. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to help you narrow those choices down so you can choose the right fly line for you. Stay tuned. To enable you to make the right choice in selecting a fly line that enables you to make the good cast and effectively present your flies to the fish, here are the things that we want to consider. I'll go over them one at a time. Selecting that fly line can be a monumental task. You go into a well-stocked fly fishing store, you may see this number of lines times 30, times 40, maybe times 50. Where do you begin? We're gonna begin right here. The myriad of choices in selecting a fly line begins in selecting whether or not it's a line that floats, it's a line that sinks, or it's a combination of the two, where a portion of the line floats and a portion of it sinks. Now, when you get into these combinations, that's where the numbers, the choices go exponential. The problem with fly lines where you have a sinking portion is that sinking portion can be five feet long, it could be as many as 30 feet long, and everything in between. On top of that, with sinking lines, you have a variety of sink rates from a fly line that has a type one rating or an intermediate, it has a sink rate of maybe one and a half to two inches per second. And you can go all the way to a type seven or type eight sinking line which may sink at a rate of up to 10 inches per second. And again, everything in between. My recommendation, if you're going to have a broad spectrum of fly fishing experiences, which is to say, you're gonna fish streams, you're gonna fish big rivers, possibly, lakes and ponds, I want you to consider a floating fly line. Next, you wanna consider the taper. When I started out in fly fishing, I did not realize the line should be tapered. I didn't have a clue. My fly line, when I tried to cast it, landed in a heap. It was only until years later that I discovered the fly line needs to be tapered. You have two good choices out there. And let's consider each one of those. See which one is right for you. We have the double taper versus the weight forward. Here are the profiles of those lines. With the double tapered fly line, you have certain advantages. Number one, if you need to make a delicate presentation of the fly, the double tapered line is an excellent choice for doing that. Secondly, the double taper is an excellent choice when you need to perform a roll cast. A roll cast is one where you have an obstruction behind you, trees, tall grass, barbed wire fence, if you take your line behind you on a standard fly cast, you're gonna hang up your line, maybe break your fly off. Roll cast enables you to keep the line essentially in front of you and get the fly out there in front, present it to the fish without ever having to take the line behind you. Item number three. An advantage that the double taper line has is economy. It's tapered at both ends. Fly lines, like your socks and your shoes, will eventually wear out over time. When that happens with a double tapered fly line, if it's a floater and the coating cracks, which eventually will, what you can do is pull the line off the reel, turn it around, and you've got a brand new taper to deal with, one that hasn't been exposed to the elements 
being stepped on. So that's a nice thing to have, a brand new taper at the other end. The other taper for your consideration is the weight forward. Let's take a look at the profile of a weight forward taper. The weight forward really has four advantages. Number one, if you need to cast for distance, it's the weight forward line that's going to do the job easier than a double taper. Secondly, if you need to cast in the wind, and sooner or later we all have to deal with the wind, the design of a weight forward taper better enables you with a good cast to pierce the wind, to make that cast, whereas a double taper line is going to get blown around because of its profile in the wind. Thirdly, with the weight forward taper, if you're going to cast large air resistant flies, let's say like a bass bug or an oversized dry fly, or you're going to cast heavily weighted flies, the weight forward taper is better designed so that when you make the cast, the momentum of the cast carries through the entirety of the line and leader all the way to the fly. Better presentation. And fourthly, and this is very important, especially for beginners, the weight forward taper is easier to cast. More of the line's weight, as the name would imply, weight forward, more of the weight is forward on the line. So a short cast where most beginners begin, okay, is easier made with a weight forward taper. All things being equal, I'm gonna highly recommend, because that's what I use 99% of the time, is a weight forward taper. You need to match the line to the rod. On the, the line box is a, is a line of code, letters and numbers. Let's take a look at the typical code or specs you're gonna see on a line box. The first two letters here refer to the taper of the line. Most often you're going to see DT for double taper, or WF for weight forward. Secondly, we have a number, and that number is the, the line weight. That's what you're going to match to the rod that you cast it on. So let's say you have a trout rod. It will typically have a four, a five, or a six weight line recommended on it. Look here on this rod blank. You'll see the specs and the recommended fly line. So on the fly line box, you need to look for that number that matches up to your rod. The third little bit of code or spec on the, the line box tells you whether or not that is a floating line indicated by an F, a sinking fly line indicated by S, or a combination. We'll go F slash S. Again, match that fly line to the rod you're going to cast it on. Another consideration, if you get a floating fly line as your line of choice, consider the color. The question I get asked most often by my students is, does the color of the line startle the fish? Does it alarm them? My answer to them is, it isn't the color of the line that disturbs the fish. It's when you make a, a faulty cast and the line splashes on the water, or it's the shadow of the line, especially in shallow water, that can alarm the fish. When you think about it, the fish are looking up at the line against the sky as the background. So it's very hard to see the color. The color is for you. The color is for me to see, especially in dim light conditions. Also, if I'm fishing small flies and I can't locate that fly visually and it's floating, if I follow my fly line, it will lead me to the fly. A brightly colored fly line is always my choice in a floating fly line. Lastly, the right line for you. As I said early, if you're a generalist, you're going to have a broad spectrum of fishing waters, streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds. The first fly line you should consider is a floating fly line with a weight forward taper, brightly colored, and make sure it's matched to the rod you're going to cast it on. Let's say you're after a second fly line and you want to fish ponds and lakes, or your specialist 
and that's all you're going to fish. You don't care about rivers. Then I would ask you to consider a full sinking fly line with an intermediate or type one sink rate. It's going to have a sink rate of about one and a half to two inches per second. It's your single best choice. And why is a topic for another video when I talk specifically about fly fishing in lakes. Or you can pick up my book, Effective Stillwater Fly Fishing, and read about it there. I hope you found this helpful. If you have, look for my other videos and be alerted to the new ones that I'm going to put out. My YouTube channel is Michael Gorman Fly Fishing, all one word. Hope to see you there. And in the interim, when you go fishing, keep your fly in the water. Have a fly fishing question? Go to GormanFlyFishing.com. At the bottom of each page on the website is my email address. Contact me via email to ask your question and I will answer it. Your question may be selected to be answered by a video I create. With your permission, I will reference you in the video by your full name and the city or town in which you live.